We got another awesome quote here from Jadu Krishnamurti from the book, Think on These Things. So good. Questioner asks him, how can we be free of dependence as long as we're living in a society, living in society? But before we get to his answer, let me just talk with you a sec. We all have these desires. We want to be these things and do these things and accomplish these things. And we want to feel good and important and cared for and loved and belonging. We have all these human desire that are designed to procreate. Very simple. It's designed to procreate because those little genes inside of us, those little very selfish things want to keep living to go on. And they use us as a vessel to basically live forever. It's actually kind of fascinating. We have to be a vessel for a short 20 to 100 years, depending on how lucky or unlucky we are. And then these genes just keep going from one person to the next, hitchhiking along the human organism. And they've been doing that actually since the dawn of time. They've been living in all organisms and have been evolving and getting better and better at surviving and adapting. And it's just very wild when you think about it. Understand it. Understand your humanity. Understand nature. Understand what Darwin was talking about. Understand there's no morality. Understand nothing exists outside of your mind. I've been ruminating on this idea that we're all gods to ourselves. Because if you think about it, what is the only omnipresent thing in your life that will always be there and that you can never escape? Yourself. Your every decision, your every action is in your mind. Nobody can choose for you. Nobody can think for you. Nobody can act for you. It's all you. It comes back to you. So in that way, even if your idea of God being this external thing that you follow, who decides to follow that God? And who decides that that is a God? Well, for most people in their traditional religious upbringing, somebody else told them that they should believe in this God because some book was written or some this or some that. Or they went to a lot of Sunday school. If the idea of being your own God doesn't sit well with you, then I would encourage you to pull on that thread to understand why that's the case. Because the God that most people think of as some dude in the sky with a white beard or whatever is omnipresent. That's the idea most people have. All powerful, all knowing, all seeing, omnipresent, everywhere at all times. And is that not you in your reality? Can you ever go anywhere in the universe and not be the center of the universe? Now, when I think of that statement, I imagine myself turning around, looking around, and then everything being around me, and me being the center. And then if I step over here, I'm the center again. And if I step over here, I'm the center again. In this way, we are all our own God. Whether or not we embrace that, whether or not we have issues with it, if we struggle with the morality of it or the definition of it, doesn't change the fact that it's you deciding everything. And that's what Max Truth is. And that's what I'm writing my book about right now is that everything comes down to you and you alone. And everything is choice because only you can choose. Nobody can choose for you. And everywhere you go, you're the center of the universe. Pretty powerful, profound stuff. And you might listen to this on your way to work before you slip back into the sleepwalking state of responsibilities and chores and email and phone calls and kids and whatever. And you might be thinking consciously, because hopefully these ideas marinate in your subconscious. I'm really trying to get your subconscious here because that's where change really happens. But maybe consciously you're thinking, okay, cool. That's an interesting thought experiment. Maybe I even agree with what you're saying, but what the hell is it going to do for me? Like, How is this useful? Now, there's a lot of ways to answer that question. I think it's the most useful thing there is. When you fully accept truth and when you fully accept your godness to yourself, when you fully accept that you're the only omnipotent presence in your reality forever, for better or worse, it's all the same. It's all your choice. It's all you. And when you consider that without your mind, if you die, nothing exists, which is actually interesting why people care about death so much, why we're so afraid of it. Why would we care about death? Once we're dead, nothing matters. We don't exist. We can't be upset that we don't get to live anymore because there's no such thing as living or life or anything. But what it does, as Steve Jobs said, death is the greatest thing to ever happen to life and or humans or whatever the quote was because it gives meaning. If there was no death, if there was no struggle, if we all lived in a utopia of perfection as the socialists and the Democrats would have you believe is possible, if just you gave more power to the state, <laughs> then what would be the point? You would have mass misery. I mean, you'd have to be the point where we would all probably just collectively decide to kill ourselves. But we all decided, so it's good. It's all equal. We all got to die at the same time. That's what's really hard for humans. We want black or white. We want certainty. We want to feel like we know things. We want to trust the people around us. But Socrates said, I know that I know nothing because he identified how dangerous it was to know things. 
how dangerous belief was, how it kept you blind and you couldn't see things. So how this helps you in your everyday life is it makes you appreciate things. It makes you find meaning or helps you or guides you. And it's a fundamental law of the universe. There's laws of the universe that if you try to violate them, you will always lose. And this is what happens every single day for billions of humans. They try to violate laws of nature. They try to force things. They try to pretend. They lie to themselves, lie to others. And then they live lives of quiet desperation as Thoreau identified in the 1800s. And it's more prevalent now than ever. It's even easier now than ever because of the mass amount of distraction that you can escape into. That there are very few awake, living, truth-seeking and truth-abiding by humans. And this isn't just about making money or being successful because there's a lot of successful people that are not living successful lives. They can have all the money in the world, but they're not successful. My definition of success is peace and control and autonomy and meaning and purpose. And you can have all the money in the world and be none of those or have a couple of them or whatever. This is about being effective in life, about finding meaning and purpose. By taking advantage of this gift that is life so that every second, hopefully every second, you won't ever accomplish this because you're an imperfect human being that's designed to procreate. But you can get to that point where a large chunk of your life, which I'm now discovering in my mid-30s, can be at peace. You don't have to live in fear or worry or dread or obsessiveness. You can control exactly what you want. You can decide what you want. And the thing is, you always have decided. Even when you let somebody else decide for you, that's a choice. That's a decision. But you didn't even know the difference because you were indoctrinated to believe that you're supposed to listen to the teachers and the politicians and your parents or whatever. That's why Jadu, most of what he talks about in Osho, another one of my favorite thinkers slash talkers, is about revolting, rebelling. You have to rebel against everything. You have to be born again, like Nietzsche said, in his very complex three-step metamorphosis. He wrote a whole book about it. Thus spoke Thera Sutra to convey the importance of you have to revolt. You have to shed the burdens of the camel in one loud roar in the lion, which represents courage and anger. And then you shed all of it and you're born again as a child because that's the only way to build meaning in life is to let go of everything that came before. Because anything that is built upon the lies and half-truths and indoctrination of your upbringing, of society, of history, will be flawed. So how this can help you in, in your life is, is very simply, it can help your life. The closer you get to truth, to seeing what really is, rather than what you hope it is or want it to be, the less suffering there is. The more you see and understand, the less you force the more those bad ideas that keep you stuck just float away, dissipate. Understanding the truth of your existence, understanding your omnipresence in your life, your, your God-likeness to yourself, understanding that you make every decision in your life, even the ones you think you don't make, you are making. Everything is a choice. Everything is a decision. Everything is a trade-off. And when you make decisions that are closer to truth, that respect all of this, and you don't cling to what you hope or you think you need or other faulty desires that are designed by society, it's getting you to make a bunch of money, become famous, and then pay your taxes and follow the rules and then be miserable. But they don't tell you that part. That's what the point is, is to live a damn fine life. And if that means making a lot of money, great. And if it doesn't, and you want to live a simple life and you want to read books every day and watch Cobra Kai like I have been this past week, I love that show now. That's great too. I say that as somebody that has been able to Changed my thinking in my 30s because I used to think, I couldn't fathom how people didn't want to be successful. I couldn't, I still can't fathom in some ways and I'm working on it, how people can be overweight and look at themselves in the mirror and not be proud of what they see. These things are just so alien to me that it's hard for me to muster compassion and understanding. I understand from a biological perspective, but then I feel like we live in a modern world where you have so much opportunity to control everything that it's just sloth and laziness to not do that. And again, I know that's a little bit too much of binary thinking. It's not as simple as that. There's a lot of reasons. When it comes to this, it's the same thing. Some people want to be asleep. Some people aren't ready to be unplugged from the matrix, like Morpheus said. Some people want to stay in the matrix. If you're here at this point, you are a truth desiring individual. You want a better life. You probably want success too. And they're not mutually exclusive. You can have as much damn success as you want. And the irony is, the less you try to force it, 
The more you accept truth and the more you pursue things that are meaningful to you, the more success comes your way. This dichotomy that it's you either make money and be miserable or sell your soul or whatever, or you don't, or like making money is bad, being rich is bad, capitalism is bad, those are lies. It's not based on truth. Because the reality is in a free market, the more you provide value to people, you give them what they want, the more wealth and success you have. That's all it is. The key is to not lose yourself along the way, to not mistake the game you're playing in the end in the goal. It's not about making money or having a bunch of money. It's about freedom and autonomy and peace of mind that money can give you. That is really the fundamental issue with the modern work, hustle, make a lot of money, billion dollar valuation culture. It's about money, dollars, as if that solves all your problems. And then you wake up one day, maybe you have 10 million in the bank and you're miserable and your relationships have failed or you don't see your kids or you have all these regrets. You simply made a mistake of the game you're playing, how to play it and what the goal was. And that's what you get when you ignore truth or you can't see truth or you're blind to truth or your ego gets in the way. You're going to make mistakes that later on might seem obvious, but in real time are going to have very real consequences. And the better humans about rising above that, mastering your humanity, becoming the best version of yourself, even better than that, a better version than your best version as the ideal, one you will never actually achieve, but upon pursuing, you'll end up with a pretty great life and peace of mind and actual fulfillment, and you'll do things that matter and your life will have been worth it. That's what I want for you. So we're not actually gonna get into this quote here because I've already spent 14 minutes talking about that, but we'll get into that tomorrow. Make sure you get on the Better Human newsletter over at thebetterhuman.co and I'll see you in the next one.